Hi, if you've spent any time around me, you know that one of the desires of my heart is to see the restoration of the Book of Acts Church in uh, today's time. And uh, speaking of such, you know, I'd like to talk a little bit about prayer. And um, there's a portion of scripture in, in uh, Acts, the fourth chapter, it talks about after Peter and John were um, basically persecuted for the works that they'd done in the name of Jesus, that uh, they came back to the their uh, group, and, and this is basically what happened starting at Acts 4th chapter, verse 23. It says, And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that chief priests and elders had said to them. And when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who had made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. Who by the mouth of your servant David said, why do the nations rage and people plot vain things? The kings of the earth shook or took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now look on their hearts and grant your servants with all boldness they may speak your word, stretching out your hand to do and heal that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus Christ. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. And there's a couple things I see right here, and I see, one is I see one accord that they all prayed together. Every one of them prayed at the same time. It wasn't like, you know, like uh, what you see in church when, you know, the pastor prays over the congregation and, you know, he says, well, let us pray. And what he really should say is, let me pray. And everybody's probably, you know, kind of looking around or maybe checking their phone. But we we don't see that in the book of Acts. We see that when they prayed, they prayed in concert. They prayed in one accord. They prayed a number of people going up as one voice. And the other thing we see is um, that... They raised their voice. They were passionate about it. They prayed loud and they prayed all together. And just remember, it's not confusing to God when everybody's praying at the same time. In the room, if everybody's crying out and praying out loud and, and to, to the Lord, he, he hears it. So there, maybe there's something we can we can learn from this. And the other thing is, it says that the place was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word with boldness. There's, I, I, I don't even, I, I don't even know where to start because it seems like Christianity has been so watered down we're so scared to to appear to be radical when we pray. We're so scared to be bold when we proclaim the word of God. And it's like, we need to be. These times right now are hard times. We need to learn the art of crying out to God. I cried to the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from my issues and my troubles. There's a desperation that God looks for. The effectual fervent prayer, as James, I think it's 5.16, says, Effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It says in Hebrews, I think it's the fifth chapter, that Jesus, or it speaks of Melchizedek, which is symbolic of Jesus, had vehement cries and tears and was heard. And was heard. 
The desperation is what God is looking for in our hearts. The desperation, the desperation that caused the woman to break through the crowd and reach and touch the hem of the garment. The desperation of blind Bartimaeus when he cried out and they said, no, 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 don't cry out. You know, be quiet. And he got, he cried out even more. The desperation of not caring what people think. Not caring what Joe Blow on left side and Susie Q on the right side when you're in church. You're, you're just, you're going for it. I, I'm, I'm reminded of when David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back. And he was so excited about bringing the presence of God. The presence of God. That he was dancing. And he was sacrificing. He was dancing. And his wife, I think it's Michael... His wife looked out and says, look at you, you're making a fool of yourself. And David says, you know what? And he danced even more and danced even harder. And the Bible says that it was she was stricken barren for the rest of her life because of that comment. God is looking for people that are desperate. People that will cry out, people that will cry, people that will intercede, people that will stand and, and wrestle with him till they're blessed. People like Jacob, they wrestled with him till he walked with a limp. People, God is hungry for people that aren't playing around anymore. You know, and, and we don't have to be in this place of despair. We don't have to be in despair to be in this place. I'm just saying that what we need is a hunger and a desire to stay in that place of prayer, to stay in that place of intercession, to stay in that place of travail, to travail. The Bible says that when Zion travails, she shall bring forth. The same as Paul said, I labor just like a woman and child that, your, that people's souls may be birthed and that Christ may be formed within you. This place of intercession, this place of deep groanings. It doesn't look pretty. It looks almost sometimes like childbirth. But it's a place that we need to be in in order for God to move, in order for souls to be birthed, in order for prophetic things to be birthed. We need that desperation. We need that, that anticipation of his presence. We need to have the most exuberant Worship the deepest prayer and hunger for him. Or else we're just going to have what we already have. And I'm not satisfied with it.